I didn't even know folks was rapping on my shit like that. This is Danny Wolf. He's a producer who's made songs like Water by Ugly God, I by Lil Skies, and Moon Relate by Lil Uzi Vert. He has worked with some of the biggest artists in the game. He has a fire collab tape with Six Dogs, and of course, he's also worked with Juice World. But the thing is that Danny didn't even know he was actually working with Juice World until after Juice had passed. See, him and Juice World had gotten into contact right before he blew up, and since then, Danny had been sending him songs. But he had no idea that Juice World was actually recording on these beats. As many fans know, Juice World had a crazy talent for freestyling and would make tons of songs all of the time. And because of that, he has thousands of songs in the vault. So this is the story of how Danny Wolf made over 300 songs with Juice World and didn't even know it. So Danny Wolf has been in the game for a while now. He started making beats when he was in high school, and then he eventually started interning at Hoodrich Entertainment. Through his internship there, he was able to get a lot of industry connections. And since then, he's worked with tons of artists in the game, and he's built himself a very solid catalog. Meanwhile, Juice World started making music in 2015 while he was still in high school. He later changed his name from Juice the Kid to Juice World and really started putting in work. Then in 2017, he started catching the attention of other artists and began to work with Lyrical Lemonade. They released the All Girls Are the Same video on February 25th of 2018, and then the Lucid Dreams video released shortly after on May 10th. Like I said, Danny said he had DM Juice World and had talked to him the day that Lucid Dreams dropped. Juice said he liked Danny's beats and that he wanted to work in the future. I hit him up on Instagram and then he just called me like the day that Lucid Dreams dropped, and then he was just like, "Yo, I love your beats. Like I'm about to go up off this." Sh and I was like, "What?" I was like, "Hell yeah!" He's like, "I'm about to drop this lyrical video. I'm about to blow up in like an hour." And I was like, "What's she talking about?" And then he's like, "Nah, I'll probably hit you." I was like, "All right, bet." And then like an hour later, like Lucid Dreams dropped on Lyrical. And I was like, holy shit, this shit's about to go crazy. Like Juice predicted, he did indeed begin blowing up after the release of the Lucid Dreams video. After the day they had first talked, Juice told Danny to start sending him beats, so Danny began loading him up with beats regularly. We stayed in touch, and I just loaded him up with beats, like 10 beats a day, literally every day. Like every two days, every two, three days, because I wasn't trying to spam nobody. I was curious about how many beats Danny thought he sent Juice over the course of Juice's career, and he said he sent him hundreds, but like I said, he had no idea that Juice was actually recording songs over these beats. In my head, it feels like thousands of beats, but realistically, for sure, like 700, 800, like at least 900 beats, for sure. Like every day, because I always made that a, like a big thing in my career, like every single day, just like, yo, send out beats 10, 10 beats a day, like two, every two, three days, 10 beats, 20 beats. I'd be like, fuck it, like how, fuck how it really feels. Like I'm not flooded with this shit, you know? I think I, like Gmail even banned me at one point because I was making too many emails. Like, bro, I'm one of those people, I'm gonna knock on every door. He said that as he was sending in beats regularly, Juice World wasn't really responding to his messages. And keep in mind that Juice was blowing up at the time, so he was probably super busy. But to many people, this would probably discourage them to stop sending beats regularly. However, even though he was kind of discouraged by it, Danny kept grinding, making beats, and sending them to Juice World. The thing is that like, bro, didn't even hit me up or tell me that he was recording on my shit. It was like something just told me to keep sending him beats. Like something just, even though I felt like, I'll, cause you know, like when you text like a girl or somebody like, and you're like just having a conversation with yourself, you're probably thinking like, bruh, either on either one, I'm fucking weird as hell or two is like, this is gonna, like I have to trust my gut. If bro ends up hating me, like at least he got some fire ass beats one day in his phone that, you know, maybe one day or one week, nobody sends him beats or all these producers are slacking. Like he'll know that he can go back in and get some beats for me. I think we can all relate to that feeling of when you send someone something and when they don't respond your brain kind of defaults to thinking they don't like you or what you sent was wrong when in reality it's just a message and people are busy and they could have forgotten about it there's a lot of things going on behind the screen this is especially common in the music industry when producers are just sending beats to artists and the artists might not always respond even though they may have listened and in this case actually recorded over the beats for example we recently saw a story post from digital nas where he was sending a ton of beats to playboy cardi with little to no response but in this case danny said juice would respond on occasion and he typically heart the messages at least acknowledging the beats he sent him but like he was he was hearting it like on thanksgiving we would talk about like life and then just be like yo bro praying for you make sure you're good just crazy shit. and then, you know danny did admit that he was a little bothered by this but he also understood why especially since by this point juice world was one of the hottest artists in the entire music industry but he did say that he wished juice world would have given him a little bit of direction just so he had a better idea of what to make for him yeah i was a little like annoyed by it because it's like damn I could have gave you some better shit, like just give me some direction and I could have known where to go with this shit, you know? I mean, people are busy though. At the time, you definitely would want to hear that. 
you would want to definitely like sort of validation or some sort of like like yo you're doing good but at the same time i had to understand at that level it's like when you're at the top of your field like that you know you you can't really even think about stuff like that so, but also like producers be in their feelings too like shit. like I, I think i was just in my feelings or something like you know like i was just hurt because you know creative people like they just be like super emotional and shit. then on december 8th of 2019 juice world passed away from a drug overdose at an airport in chicago to danny on top of losing a great artist it seemed like nothing much ever happened in regards to his collaborations with Juice World. It looked like all the beats he sent Juice would just remain in his email forever. But then something crazy happened. He started getting DMs from Juice World fans asking him about the leaks and complimenting him on his music with Juice. However, Danny had no idea he had any songs with Juice World. Some of their collaborations like Plug and Red Dead Redemption began leaking and he was amazed that they had these songs together. After finding out about all the songs they had together, Grade A, which is Juice World's record label, reached out to him because they were planning to officially release some of their collaborations along with the Juice World documentary. So through leaks and discussions with the record label, Danny Wolf realized he had hundreds of unreleased songs with Juice World that he never even knew about. Like even I myself like still don't really understand like what's going on and shit, but it just feels kind of weird, you know, because it's like you ne you didn't know that, you know, it's like you just making shit every single day and then all of a sudden people are like, yo, this is what's going on. Like it was through all the leaks and through like hackers and shit and like honestly, millions of people just dming me every day i just had to do some research and be like what the is going on and then i'm like damn on top of finding out about all of his collaborations with juice world danny was also sent a session file by someone in the juice world community where juice was recording on some of danny's beats and this is what he heard probably like two weeks ago somebody sent me this clip where he was like man i slept on danny wolf like it's like danny if you hear this shit, um like you know i didn't sleep on you or some some crazy shit like that he's like hard as Danny Wolf, I, I, I slept on him. When I first heard it, because I'm a fan, like, people gotta understand, I'm a big fan too. So it's like, when you hear him saying, like, this be so hard, like, Danny will be so hard, like, oh, like, oh, fuck. and then I'm like, wait, that's me, like, it's that's. <laughs> but then it gets really sad and I start crying and then they're like, oh shit. Juice could be heard saying how fired Danny was, which really motivated and inspired Danny after hearing that. Especially since he hadn't heard back from Juice very much when he was sending him beats. It was probably a very bittersweet moment. And at the time, it's crazy because I actually needed to hear that because I was making so many beats every day. And I knew they were fired, but it would have been cool if, if like your homie would have told you or gave you that like that like a validation. It's like, oh yo, keep sending beats like this is hard. You know, it just helps, you know, it's like, cause I looked up to him and I'm also a fan too. So it's like, damn, it's got like Beyonce or like Jay-Z or somebody saying like, yo, you're, you're fire as f play. Your shit's really, really good. The whole time you're thinking that, but you're not really like sure about it. But sometimes all it takes is somebody telling you, you are who you think you are, you know? To this day though, Danny doesn't still know exactly how many songs they have together. So maybe I lied a little bit about an exact number in the title, but he doesn't even know who has all of the songs. It's likely that the label has some, leakers have some, and some are probably lost on random hard drives, computers, and studios around the world. I don't know who has shit. Like, I don't know I, how shit's even leaking or coming out or what was recorded or like but i know that there's like millions of people out there that really f with this shit and i'm just like shit, i'm i'm learning just as much as y'all like i don't really know like what shit. i didn't even know folks was rapping on my shit like that like so i really appreciate like i'm really really thankful that, that like juice really like picked those bees and like loaded those up because i like that really just helps out a lot you know i really just like it just makes it worth living like i'm not gonna count so danny's story really goes to show that if you put in the work and believe in yourself you never really know what could happen